it is an incredibly difficult uh, subject and you'll have as many opinions as you have people. My take on that is this, and bear in mind that I speak from the perspective of somebody who cannot get pregnant. Um, any biologist will tell you that life begins at conception. The question that you then need to ask individually and as a society is whether a life at that point is any less valuable than any other life. I don't know, to be honest, what the solution is. I believe that criminalising the act on the behalf of the woman is, is appropriate or morally justifiable. I'm very uncomfortable with the idea of... I have a son from my wife's first marriage and one that we went halves in ourselves. So I, I don't know what the solution is except to say that I am very uncomfortable with the notion of abortion. I believe life is precious. The one thing I would say in closing is this. Every person I've ever met that was in favour of abortion has already been born. That's the bottom line. Thanks, thank you. Okay, I think we have a question from Terry and then uh, I'll come back. Can I, can I make a comment oh, on oh, that? Sorry, sorry, Mike. I know it's, it, it's oh, risky and it's controversial and everything else, but I have to say, I don't know a single woman with any regret having an abortion, what's happened. And that's without exception. And that's all I'm going to say on it. So, all right. No. Thank you. Uh, Melba walked over and wanted me to ask a question, but it's not my position to ask the question. It's a question for you. I'd just like to acknowledge all the candidates here tonight. I think uh, putting yourself out in the public realm is to be congratulated, and, and I for your position. I wish you all the best and I look forward to whoever is elected on 31st of October to work very, very closely with you. So all the best. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other... Uh, oh, we do have two. Before I come back to you, you've had one question down there. Can I ask this gentleman here? Hey, I'm Peter Sturt. Uh, politics is all about numbers. For six of you here tonight, the best you can really look at is being on a crossbench. What's going to make you relevant if that's the situation? How am I going to do it? <laughs> okay, Mike, can we keep it? Yeah, the, the, yeah, there's eight people here, but there are two who are in parties. So, the, yeah. Well, that's all right. I'm, Just a quick one. You've, you've got to get used to the idea. This election, all eyes are on Queensland. These guys are... Like, you know, they have failed, basically, you know. Uh, to operate as a team, you've only got to see it at federal. You know, when they work together at COVID, you can get anything done. You wouldn't run a business anything like the way the parliamentary process is, is conducted. You wouldn't. I can tell you that. As a CEO, there is no way that you'd successfully run a business on the same basis. So you have to work as a team. So all there is to it. So, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, soldiering on, slaving away in business, watching, that ch watching them chuck our money down the drain, taxing us to oblivion, you know, that's going to stop. It's got to stop. There isn't a choice. You have to do something. Half the population, more than half the population is now over 50. You've got a youth unemployment, something like 40%, not 20 or 15, 40%. You know, there's people that haven't even worked by the time they're 30. Come on. We're importing thousands of people from, I don't know where, Samoa to, to pick the, you know, the crops and everything. When there's like, you know, the, uh, half the workforce is unemployed on this wretched job seeker, job keeper. We've got adverts out. Man, there's, we don't even get a flipping response now. Because <laughs> they're all on double the dole and this, this job keeper stuff. It's just, they haven't got a clue. Let me tell you, and operating that, as far as being forceful, that, that Labour and, and Liberal are 
incompetent in government as they are in opposition. That is my, that's why I'm here. It really is. Okay, thanks, Matthew. Can we just have a quick response, Luke, while the microphone is there? You, you're one of the six who aren't part of the, uh, the major parties. Just a very quick response. Um, well, I mean, think of it like this. I'll be a dog biting at their feet. Um, I will get whatever needs to be done. I know that I might be a minor party involved in there, um, but I will do what I have to do and I will hold any of them accountable if they don't want to help. Because right now, we have Labor and Liberal doing this whole political nonsense and saying, you know, Labor have been in government for X amount of years and Liberal have been here for X amount of years and they keep promising all these things. It's like Liberal promised to do something here and if they don't get elected, well, it would look stupid on them if they don't do what they've already promised and that's what I would push for them to do it. So, yes. Okay. I will work for the people. Anyone else want to, to ask that? Do you want all of them to give you a response? Judy, anyone else you want go uh, behind you, Raylene? Um, well, firstly, um, I think that the Greens are a force to be reckoned with. Um, they're predicting um, up to seven seats this election. Give us uh, the balance of power. Um, and you've seen what can be achieved federally uh, when the Greens have held the balance of power there. We've been able to negotiate and effect some real change. Um, but not only that, um, Michael Berkman, being the sole Greens uh, MP in Queensland, has been able to really shine the light on a number of issues. And what comes from that is you see the, the major parties then follow suit and introduce it as though it's their own policy when the, Green have, the Greens have had it as their policy for many years to come, and there's been uh, a number of times that's happened. Um, I'm a lawyer, so...